Greetings, saints. I'm Mark Crutcher, and I want to share with you today, I come to present myself as a candidate for the Director for Church Growth and Development. I believe that God has been preparing me, all of my ministry, to be the next Director of Church Growth. I've served with Dr. Wade for the last 13 years as the Dean of his department. I've had the opportunity to share with people. I've had the opportunity to do evangelism work in different countries. I also have had the opportunity to serve over the last 15 years as the Director for Evangelism for the 11th Episcopal District. Also, I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to be a pastor for the last 33 years and for the last 13 years at Mount Olive AME Church right here in Orlando. And I've seen God make a difference in people's lives. I also believe that God has given me a vision and I want to share that vision with the church of presenting a saved church to the world. And I believe that through that vision that our church can make a difference in people's lives in building families and in building individuals and in building ministries that make a difference and ministries that reach people and help them develop relationships with God and make a difference in this world that will give him glory and honor. And I would like your vote when we go to the General Conference. If you would vote, Crutcher, number 290, for church growth and development, I promise you this, he won't let you down. Good afternoon, I'm Alanis Timms, and I am sitting here with Reverend Dr. Mark E. Crutcher. He is the pastor here at Mount Olive AME Church in Orlando, Florida, and he's running for the position of Executive Director of Church Growth and Development for the AME Church. And we're gonna sit here and have a conversation with him and learn about his platform and different things that he's running under and his vision for this position. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing good, glad to be here today. That's great. So uh, you're running for the position of Executive Director of Church Growth and Development within the AME Church. Your slogan is Lean on Crutcher for Church Growth. He won't let you down. How did you come up with that and what does that mean? Well, actually, that story started early in my ministry and it was one of the early uh, signs that God was calling me to evangelism. Uh, I had moved back in my hometown. Before I moved back, I had a wreck and towed out a brand new sports car. Uh, God was moving things out of my life. So I bought uh, a 62 Plymouth Valiant and just put some insurance on it just to get around. And it started leaning, the torsion bar broke and it started leaning to one side. And what happened was all the kids in town would make fun of it. And whenever we would drive by, uh, the kids would, would sing this song, Lean On Me. And, and what it did was introduce me to all the young folk in town. I uh, started teaching school, I uh, started working in ministry, and the kids knew me through the car. Uh, and it became an introduction to the new minister that's coming into town. And the first year, uh, we had a revival. And there was kids in town that wanted to come to revival and built the relationship. Well, we put 13 kids in that car, took them to the revival, because the revival was out in the country took them to the revival and all of them got saved. And we had to go back and forth to get them there. Uh, so the car became an inspiration that introduced people to the preacher that would make a difference in their lives. That's awesome, that's amazing. And your platform is presenting a saved church to the world. How did you come reach that one and what does that part mean? Again, that one comes out of the ministry that God has given to me. Uh, and, and there are people that, that I have ministered to see me as a person that help people be saved and try to live a saved life as much as I can in the Lord. And with that, out of that platform comes, if you're going to do evangelism, then you got to first be saved and you have to present the salvation that you have in you. If you don't have it, you can't present it. You can't share with people what you don't have. You can tell them about it, but in order to share it, you have to have it yourself. So it comes out of that concept. If we're going to be a church that's going to evangelize the world, we've got to be a saved church. And we've got to present that salvation and that relationship that we have to the world. And if people see the salvation in us, they'll want the Christ that we have. They'll want to be a part of who we are, and they'll want to be saved too. 
And that the, the other part is we get a chance to show them what salvation looks like, what it feels like, and how you act when you are under that relationship with Christ. Now, we're going to get into the specifics of each point uh, within this platform in a few minutes, but how do you think this separates you as a candidate? How do you think this makes you unique, the platform that you're running under? Well, it is based on what I've seen God do, and it's based on seeing God change people's lives. I've seen God change people, young people, elderly people, people who did not know God, people didn't want a relationship with God. I've seen it make a difference. I've seen it make a difference in family lives. First of all, my family and folk close to me that I know, friends that I know. I've seen God transform my buddies I used to hang out with. And we all do sin together. Just about all of them are preachers now. And when you see that, you know God is up to something. So, so in terms of what I'm bringing is those experience in evangelism. Uh, even when I was in college, God had me talking to folk and, and sharing, uh, counseling with folk and sharing about Christ to folk before I even knew fully what he was myself. And so, so that platform is coming out of those experiences, not just something that I put together, but something that I've seen God make a difference in people's lives with. So the saved part in presenting a saved church to the world means sharing anointed vision, empowered discipleship. And we're going to break down each of the points in this acronym, starting with the S, sharing God's word, evangelism. What does that mean? Okay. If you're going to evangelize, you got to first share God's word. And I want to start by saying we have to start uh, with um, exemplifying the kind of attitude that Jesus had toward evangelism, the true nature of evangelism was shown to us by Christ. And we got to help people develop a relationship by sharing the word of God that they will learn to give themselves to Christ and learn to be obedient to the word of God. So it all starts with the word. Without the word, you can't evangelize because you got to share with them the word so that they'll know Christ. And then we got to help them learn to be obedient to Christ and not just come and accept Christ as their savior and, uh, and not want him to be the Lord of their life. And then what we have the opportunity to show them how to give themselves to the Lord. Because our evangelism efforts have to teach people to give themselves. If we just teach them the knowledge of Christ, then those kind of relationships seem to break down under trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to just help people to understand Satan know Christ, but he doesn't give himself to Christ. And as a result, he don't have that kind of relationship. And, and, and as much as he know about Christ, it still won't get him out of hell. But if we teach folk how to give themselves to Christ through the word of God and the word of God has the power to do that, then we can build strong relationships that when difficult times come, they know that God is still there with them. They know that they can still make it through. It may be tough, but they know somehow they're going to make it through and they can stay with, with Christ even in tough times. Like for instance, when a lot of people are facing death now, and, and they need that kind of relationship. They've seen loved ones die. They've seen loved ones in the hospital. They're praying for those in the hospital and those who have just died. But they need to know that there is a God that will see them through. It may get rough. They may not get all their prayers answered like they want them. But God still will take care of them. And when it's all over with, they will be with the Lord. And even the loved ones, they have to have the understanding that as they release them, they release them into the hands of a loving God that will care for them. Next is the A, anointed cross-cultural experiences. Tell us about that one. Well, in evangelism, we have to learn to evangelize folk from all walks of life. The Great Commission tells us to go into all the world. We can't evangelize people that just look like us or people that just talk like us. We have to get people from different races, from different cultures, and the kingdom of God inside the church should look like the kingdom that God wanted to be with people from all walks of life. When, when Pentecost happened, there were Jews from every nation on this planet uh, was there to see the power of God move. And so God was saying something that I'm opening this up for everybody. And so we've got to have evangelism activities that speak to different cultures, that, that respect people cultures and speak to them in a way for they, that they feel welcome, uh, they feel wanted to be a part of us, and they, and they feel that we have an understanding of what they are experiencing 
and what they value in life. That's such a good point too, right? Being able to reach across different cultures and spread the gospel that way. Do you see any barriers or difficulties in that cross-cultural experience and how, how would you address that? Okay. Uh, yes, particularly now, because right now our world is seen to dividing even more so. We have to get rid of some of our hatred. We have to get some of our hurt. We have to get rid of some of the fears that we have. We have to stop saying folk who don't look like us don't want the Christ that we have. And we have to take the opportunity to try and share. Uh, we have to open our hearts up. And sometimes that's taking a chance. But it's worth it. If you can reach somebody and make a difference in their life, it's worth taking the chance. Yeah, you get rejected sometimes. But what I understand, Christ was rejected. And the, the, the amazing part, he was rejected by his own folk. And the people who were not like him accepted him quicker than the folk who were. And so we have to understand if Christ went through that kind of rejection, we have to be willing to do it for him too. But look what we'll have if we overcome that. And, and we can make a difference in people's lives and get people to start living and loving each other. We can prevent some of the stuff like we saw with, that on television, folk going to the Capitol and just, just trying to take over the Capitol, and mm -hmm. folk killing folk over foolishness. And, and that's the thing, evangelism can't stop at the door. It has to be holistically. And we have to have an evangelism outreach that help folk not only know how to find Christ, but how to live in Christ once they are saved. Next is the V, which is visionary ministry development. So tell us about that one. And are there any specific ministries uh, that you plan on addressing with that? Okay. Well, first of all, we have to find ways to redevelop some of our ministries, but sometimes our facilities, some of our churches, we have to redevelop facilities or uh, even build new facilities that will uh, enable us to be able to minister to the needs of people. Mm -hmm. We have to develop some of our plans of action, the way we do service, the way we even do ministry, and even whom we serve. We've got to be willing to do it in a different way because sometimes we have a tendency to minister to people 20 years past. And, and so we have to find out what are the needs that people have today. Uh, for instance, right now, uh, we're in a process to where we have to minister to people who can't come into the building. So we've had, all of us have had to start using technology in a more rapid way and a more holistic way than we've been doing just to be able to reach people. We have to have meetings in a different way. We used to have meetings where folk would come to the church and they'd spend time at the church having the meetings. Now folk are having those meetings at home on Zoom. And so we have to find ways to reach people in, from where they are. We have to find ways to speak to our young folk, our young people now, just even in terms of, say, like you're taking up an offering. Many young folk don't come to church with cash money. So you got to be able to have a resource there to where they can give to the church in a different way. If you don't, you're going to tell them, well, what you have to give is not important. And, and then by that, you'll tell them they're not important. Yeah. And sometimes you have to just even getting the communication out. Uh, you may have to send text messages to them where you're used to doing it through a different pro process. So we have to redevelop ministry to meet the needs of the people that we're serving now. And that's facilities, that's programs, that's the method and the way we'll go by doing it. Uh, all of those things sometimes have to change and we have to be comfortable with that. And, and what we also get to is allow people to use the gifts that they have. Uh, a lot of time young folks are full of gifts and talents, they can help us share the word of God. And they can do it in a way that's exciting, a way that gives people attention. And we have to have the strength to do it and the courage to do something different and allow young people to be involved into that process. We have to talk to them and, and allow them to tell us what they need or what they want. Up next, we have empowered multi-generational engagement. What does that mean? Well. And, and, and that's when we have to find alternative ways to bring folk into the process. I was doing a sermon on the Wizard of Oz and we was trying to find a way to get young folk engaged into that process. Well, the Spirit of the Lord led us to ask them to, would they help us do the sermon and have the dance ministry perform while we're doing the ministry? Well, the young folks said, well, can we add Leah? I said, go ahead. They came up with costumes, they came up with with props and, 
and put together a beautiful presentation uh, to where they help present the gospel. Not only could people see what we hear what we was talking about, but they can also see what was taking place as well. And those young folk brought new skills, they brought new ideas and mindset to the process, and it engaged them in that. And so and when, we, uh, when, when, when I did the sermon, uh, at the service we did, the church was there and many folks came out because they wanted to not just hear the preacher, they wanted to see the young folk and what they was doing as well. And we've got to find ways to engage people from all different age groups. We got to get young folk talking to elderly folk so that the elderly folk can share them the wisdom and the young folk can share the new ideas and concept that God is doing. And then we've got to bring them together and utilize them in building ministry. Uh, but that engagement process, because a lot of our young folks start disengaging at around about 16 years of age. And by the time they get 21, many churches, we don't know where they are. We've got to find out what is the reason why you're not engaged and find out ways where they're comfortable engaging into the ministry. And that ties into what you were mentioning in your previous point about technology, because what we're seeing now since the pandemic started is that churches are able to reach multiple generations across different generations through their technology. They're having to become more savvy and, their, and more creative in the way that they reach their audience. Uh, how does that tie into this point that you're making as well? Well, exactly. Uh, what we're finding out in talking to different preachers, all of us are talking to far more people now than we talked to when we was inside the, kind of, in the church. Mm -hmm. And so, and as you say, we've all had to re readjust. We spent uh, a lot of money in equipment, lights and cameras and uh, sound systems and, and, and all the things that go with it that we just knew we had to have to do ministry. And then God forced us into a situation where we were doing ministry uh, with a cell phone. And so we have had to reinvent ourselves in terms of how we reach people. Same message, but just using different platforms. And, and all of us have had to go back to school and learn new skills and how to do a Zoom, how to do a conference call, uh, how to network those together. And we're still learning in that process. That, that's extremely important that we be willing to be open to doing something different uh, and utilizing the technology. And here is where a lot of those young folk that have been sitting in our church are uh, just disengaged, know more about it than we ever will. And if we can bring them into that process, that's the way they come back that they're more involved because they start running equipment, they start setting up things. And they, the other thing is they learn skills that they can use in life when they go to school and go off and get jobs. And now we have disciple making, making kingdom minded disciples, which is the D in our acronyms, presenting a saved church to the world. Remember, it stands for sharing anointed vision, empowered discipleship. So share uh, that last point with us. The discipleship, that's a big one, because what we have to learn to do is make disciples. Uh, many times we wind up uh, making members and we too focus on getting members into the church rather than making disciples for Christ. And we've got to make disciples that are not disciples of a, of a denomination, not disciples of a church, and definitely not disciples of personalities. We have to make disciples of Christ. And if we make disciples of Christ, then we'll have people that learn and understand how to live for Christ, how to walk into anointing of God, and they'll make better members. Uh, I hear sometimes that people in our church complaining about different um, organizations in the church. Maybe some folk I complain the clergy are not doing this, the laity are not doing that. Well, I'm saying to folk, one of the ways that I think that that's create some of our problem is, is we have to adjust how we make disciples. Uh, if we make good, strong, kingdom-minded disciples, they'll work good in all the capacities that we have. They'll make good lay members. They'll make good clergy folk. They'll make good stewards and trustees uh, or whatever position that they serve in because they realize that they're not just serving themselves or even the local church. They're serving the kingdom. Uh, they'll be more apt to reach out to folk. Uh, they'll be able to talk to people beyond their little circle better and they'll be more committed to doing what they have to do because what they realize is they're doing it for Christ. 
uh, and they realize that there's a relationship with Christ that will support them in doing what they have to do. And so, and that's what we have to help build up. We can't stop evangelism at the door and say, now that you know Christ, you're on your own. Uh, we have to have that process of helping them build a strong foundation. Uh, what we call in terms of spiritual growth, spiritual foundation to where they learn how to live according to the word of God and how to use it to overcome things in their life. And, and that's the key I think that we need to really focus on is teaching folk how to overcome things. Because when we come to God, uh, all of us have been something that we hadn't been at some point and, and different people at different levels. But we have issues in our lives that we need to know how to overcome. If we don't overcome those issues, then we'll bring them right into the church. And we'll wind up introducing the same demonic presence and the same bad attitudes and dispositions that we had outside in the house of God. But if we teach them how to use the word of God, the spirit of God and the love of God, then to overcome those things, they'll be stronger Christians. We have a better atmosphere in the church and we have more anointed people that's able to help us do what we need to do. Yeah, and that's what a leader does, right? Uh, you see issues that your people are having and you come up with solutions on how to move forward and how to bring everyone together. And I feel like that's what we're seeing with the different points in your platform. Uh, we know this was a lot of information, but if you just had to sum up you know, everything that you've talked about in just a couple words, how would you sum up your platform presenting a saved church to the world? Well, the, the best way I sum that up is in terms of this, that what we have to do is teach people uh, to learn how to give themselves to Christ and learn how to imitate Christ and use that anointing and that knowledge that they have uh, according to the word of God to live the way Christ wants us to do and to apply that to the way they do ministry. Uh, and in that process, it brings us all together and teaches us to use our gifts in a way that will change people's lives and make a difference in the kingdom of God. And if anyone would like to get any more information on any of the points we've discussed, where can they go to read about your platform and the different points that you've okay. made today? To get information about the platform, you can go to our website, which is asavechurch.org, asavechurch.org, Facebook page, which is Crutcher 2020 Vision. And both of those places, you can get information that will give you more details about what we believe, what we are trying to do as a vision and present that vision to the church. And is there anything else you'd like to add or say today? Well, I like to say this. Evangelism is something that I feel that God has put into me all of my life. And, and I've, I can look back now and see where God has been involved in my life through evangelism, even since I was a child. And the truth of the matter is, if our church is going to be relevant, we've got to help folk make a difference in their lives. They should see it in their individual lives, in their families, and they definitely should see it in our ministries in the way that we glorify God in doing his work. Well, thank you, Pastor Crutcher, uh, for sharing our, your vision with us today, for being here. Uh, remember, everyone, he is running for the position of Executive Director of Church Growth and Development within the AME Church. Uh, again, thank you, and everyone have a blessed day.